live. Good morning, everybody. It's your favorite truck driver in the whole wide world. It's Bitcoin Ben. Here for the morning. What the block is going on? All right, let me close this out here. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm wearing my rock and roll shirt. Folks, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the future. I'm going to take this initial half hour. In fact, I'm going to I'm I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to go full blown no distractions. Folks, we are at, we are here. We are at the point that we have prayed for. We are this is the year that libertarian and freedom-loving people have been waiting for. This is the year. This is the year where we have all of the tools needed to separate ourselves from the small group of people who have tried entrapping us. Now, is it going to be easy? Nope. No, but it's going to be fun. And I'll tell you why. Because we as individuals, me, you, other individual companies, other smaller companies, other larger companies are, are red-pilled and orange-pilled. And even... All right. I played a, um, a few documentaries last night on my three-hour uh, private server video. It was actually like three hours and 15 minutes. And it was how the elites lost their power through their children. That's a lot of what's going on is that the the old elites, their children are not of the same mindset as them. There are a lot of wealthy bloodline children who are libertarians, who are freedom-based people. They, they don't like the, the old system. A, a great example is that young guy who runs up. Uh, oh, God, what's that app I got? A strike. Right. How many people here have the uh, strike app where you can, yes, Jack Miller. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, Jack Mahler. Do you know who his dad is? His, his father was the CEO of the Chicago Bank on uh, CBTO or whatever it's called, the exchange in Chicago, the CBDO or CBOD or whatever the hell it was. 
Yes, C B O E. Right. That was his dad. His his father was that CEO. Exactly. It's a bond exchange. His father ran it. He is the complete opposite of his dad. The complete opposite. Have you heard that kid talk? And hell, that kid's like 12 years old. He's not, but you get my point. He wants freedom. He... He hates the old system. He hates the dollar. And he's passionate about it. I mean, that kid gives zero plucks about the old system. He slaps it around on every interview. And yet his father was the CEO of one of one of the major pieces of the old system. That's that's what we got going on, folks. It's a generational mindset that's going away and it's happened every time in history see there's a lot of people in the system who aren't bad it's just their generation thought organization would lead to process lead to prosperity. That's what a lot of the the progressives thought, that they were part of a movement of organization. Now, Now, don't get me wrong. There are some evil Jeffrey Epstein sons of bitches in the progressive movement. But to be fair, there's some not so good people in in the fringe of the right. Now, they're each small groups, right? They're each small groups. The difference is we're uniting together. I'm going to play you a video of Michael Moore. All right. I want you to listen to this. All right. I want you to listen to what Michael Moore. Right. Hang on one second. I'm going to share this real quick. Listen to what Michael Moore said about Donald Trump. And um, they're not people uh, in Michigan that are planning to vote for Trump. And um, they're not 
they don't necessarily like him that much. And they don't necessarily agree with him. They're not racist and rednecks. And they're actually pretty decent people. And so I wanted to sort of, after talking to a number of them, I wanted to sort of, I wanted to write this. And Donald Trump came to the Detroit Economic Club and stood there in front of the Ford Motor Executive and said, if you close these factories as you're planning to do in Detroit and build them in Mexico, I'm going to put a 35% tariff on those cars when you send them back and nobody's going to buy them. It was an amazing thing to see. No politician, Republican or Democrat, had ever said anything like that to these executives. And it was music to the ears of people in Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, the Brexit states. <laughs> you live here in Ohio, you know what I'm talking about. Whether Trump means it or not is kind of irrelevant because he's saying the things to people who are hurting. And it's why every beaten down, nameless, forgotten working stiff who used to be part of what was called the middle class loves Trump. He is the human Molotov cocktail that they've been waiting for. The human hand grenade that they can legally throw into the system that stole their lives from them. And on November 8th, election day, although they lost their jobs, Although they've been foreclosed on by the bank, next came the divorce, and now the wife and kids are gone. The car's been repoed. They haven't had a real vacation in years. They're stuck with the shitty Obamacare bronze plan where you can't even get a fucking Percocet. <laughs> they've essentially lost everything they had except one thing. The one thing that doesn't cost them a cent and is guaranteed to them by the American Constitution, the right to vote. They might be penniless, they might be homeless, they might be fucked over and fucked up, it doesn't matter because it's equalized on that day. A millionaire has the same number of votes as the person without a job, one. And there's more of the former middle class than there are in the millionaire class. So on November 8th, the dispossessed will walk into the voting booth, be handed a ballot, close the curtain, and take that lever or felt pen or touchscreen and put a big fucking X in the box by the name of the man who has threatened to upend and overturn the very system that has ruined their lives. Donald J. Trump. They see that the elites who ruined their lives hate Trump. Corporate America hates Trump. Wall Street hates Trump. The career politicians hate Trump. The media hates Trump after they loved him and created him and now hate him. Thank you, media. The enemy of my enemy is who I'm voting for on November 8th. Yes, on November 8th, you, Joe Blow, Steve Blow, Bob Blow, Billy Blow, Billy Bob Blow, all the blows get to go and blow up the whole goddamn system because it's your right. Trump's election is going to be the biggest fuck you ever recorded in human history. And it will feel good. Now, someone wrote over in the chat that that was AI generated. I checked it. It's not. All right, I've never liked him. I've never liked Michael Moore. I, and I don't even give a fuck if he really supports Trump. I don't. All right? 
And I don't care if he hates Trump. I don't. But that, that was somebody looking at something and being honest with what he saw. I don't think Michael Moore loves Trump. I don't think that he's all, woohoo, Trump, yay. But I think what he did was he, he honestly looked at the people. And he saw the people, not where he wanted them to be, but where they were at. There's a lot of people that are going through, and I don't even care if he was red pill. I don't give a shit about Michael Moore. What I give a shit is what he said and who he said it to. I, most of the people who were in that audience, all they've heard is hate Trump. Hate Trump. Hate Trump. As you noticed, as he went through it, you didn't hear applause, but you didn't hear boos. You didn't hear people saying, Michael, Michael, but it's Trump. We're supposed to boo him. You didn't hear that. What you heard was an honest statement from someone who looked at the people and where they're at, not where they want them to be. That is so important. And the fact that he's, he's willing to say that in public on a forum like Michael Moore or Hayden, I don't, like I said, I, I don't care about Michael Moore. I don't care who he's voting for. I care that he looked at the people and was honest. That's what I care about. Yes, the, and that's my point. All right. And I don't care if it is seven years old. I don't care. All right. I've never seen it. The age of the video is irrelevant. What is relevant is is that people are sharing it now. How old is the Constitution? It doesn't matter. It's the words, the words that matter.
And the fact that people are, right, if it is actually current, like I said, Right, it's the message, and it's being shared on Twitter, and it's going viral. Yes, right, the tide is shifting. It's already shifting. Folks, the elections won. And what's what I want people to realize is I don't even give a fuck if there is an election. Yes, you heard me right. I don't care. If there's a 2024 election, the social tide has shifted. The old world order is done, not because of an election, but because Folks, do you realize that if there's not an election, we just relaunch a government? That's it. We just relaunch a government. It may be tougher to do, but that's it. We just relaunch a government. Now, this is the part, right? This is the part we need to worry about. Right here. Now. I've told you guys, please, guys, listen to me. They're trying to trap us. They know they're losing. They know it. So they're trying to trap us in a digital jail. Now, I'm going to play something for you. All right? Listen closely. Skilling. So we're going to come to skill in a second and what kind of skills people will need to thrive in as well. But one question for you first. You talked about the the C-suite and and whether CEOs are prepared and understand this technology. And... In fact, I may ask the other two of you too. When you talk to your clients, like what overall level of understanding is that? I mean, does the average CEO, and there are many of them here, really understand this technology? Do they know it's big and they need to do something about it? What's the level of, of understanding, do you think? I think there's a level of understanding that they need to learn more. We have 150 people signed up here to do workshops, not attend panels, because they understand they have to know more. But right now, you've got a lot of focus on the value, a lot of focus on the talent. The C-suite needs to understand better the actual technology, and we are seeing them do the work. So I, I, don't, I don't think there's a gap in belief, but this is still really, really early, right? And uh, it's going to take a while, uh, but it's moving fast. Arvid, would you agree with that? It's moving really, really fast. You would say that this technology is moving at about 10 times the pace of the previous big one. If I look All right, I want you to listen very closely. 
to what this guy says and then the response from the woman and the and the guy from America. Listen closely. Look at it, semiconductors, internet, AI. I would put it kind of in that category. And if you look at the rate and pace, it is incredible. But if you sort of step back, go back to the point that the minister and the senator made, how do you put guardrails while allowing innovation to happen? That's now they now remember they are actually talking about artificial intelligence. They're, they are talking about how to control what the people see. Keep that in mind. It's kind of the dilemma. Because if you just put guardrails, that's bureaucracy, that's red tape. So how do you allow innovation to happen? And the advice that I would give is, it's really hard to kind of regulate the technology itself. Because if you do that, innovation stops. So regulate the use cases. So the more risky the use case, the more regulation there should be. That's an approach that can be taken and has been taken in prior technologies. Two, hold the developers of these models accountable from a legal sense. So if they are misusing data or misusing something or letting it get applied badly, hold the developers accountable from a legal sense. And three, because it is an economic advantage, foster an open ecosystem, not a closed ecosystem. If you can kind of get regulation that allows for those three, then I think you're going to satisfy industry, but you're going to give the guardrails that both the senator and the minister asked for. And you mean an open... All right, listen closely to what she says. Listen when she talks about the superconductor and the microchip manufacturing and how the microchips are manufactured and programmed. Listen closely. An international ecosystem or an open national ecosystem? I think that this is where people get very confused. Can you tell me a digital technology that you can keep to inside a physical boundary? The two things are... Uh, well, this is where I'm going to... Yeah, I mean, the Senate, the Senate of my All right, listen closely. I disagree here because some of what the U.S. is doing uh, with... Look at the smirk on her face. Is ...with its chip export. Um, a chip is a physical good. It's a physical good, but it is designed... Part of the goal of this is to prevent acceleration in this area. Uh, it, yes, but, <clears throat> but, but can you allow others or are you stopping others from accessing a cloud service from over the internet? Of course not. So if you're going to allow digital technologies, you're going to allow them. Then there are certain activities of a nature the senator talked about where they do not want to access it remotely. They need it physically. Other than military purposes, there's very few you can think about that require that level of physical locality. So I think it actually satisfies both. But digital technologies are really hard to contain to a border. Christian, I'm going to come to you in just a second, but I, do, I want to get back to the senator here because this is a really interesting one because the U.S. Listen to what she says. Listen to what the U.S. is doing with the microchips. Listen to how she says the whole internet we can't allow people to access the whole internet is in effect using a physical means to try and control the development of digital capabilities it is with with the chip it is so sensitive to us that we remain a leader in terms of the high speed technology available in the most advanced chips, that we measure our spread from us versus our near peer adversaries in a technology period of months. How many months ahead do we believe we are in the development of AI capabilities? And by simply restricting the availability of chips, and in fact, the most advanced chips, we know it's not a long-term success, but it is a short-term success while 
we can uh, uh, slow down other development while we proceed as best we can to maintain our competitive edge. Other areas, uh, networking is one area that we have a real advantage. And it's one that we can never allow ourselves to be uh, uh, in second place on. And so th that's the reason why, the, why, why we do have the restrictions on it. We know it's not a long-term fix, but it gave us a few more months in terms of our technology edge. Christiana, you, you um, in some ways, were impacted by this too. Do you, do you sit, sense, do you agree with the Senator that these kinds of fixes are short-term ones buying the U.S. time? Look, it, it, I'm going to play this again. Listen to how casually they are talking about restricting the freedom using the hardware. Here's a word from the sponsor of this program. My company who offers a Liberty laptop. Introducing the Liberty Laptop, your gateway to online anonymity. Engineered with your privacy in mind, the Liberty Laptop comes equipped with cutting-edge security features, ensuring that your data remains yours and yours alone. No more worries about your personal information being shared without consent. Say goodbye to prying eyes and third-party snoops. Enjoy your online freedom with advanced privacy settings, protecting your every digital move, all at your fingertips. With the Liberty Laptop, you control what others see and don't see. We customize your privacy settings and let only what matters most to you be shared. No more concerns about unwarranted surveillance. We put the power back in your hands. No unwanted access through the laptop's camera and microphone. Powered by the latest technology, the Liberty Laptop ensures performance while respecting your personal boundaries. The Liberty Laptop. Your control. Your privacy. Your world. Visit calixsolutions.io to experience true personal freedom today. Okay, the reason that every single person here listening to this should get a Liberty laptop, and here, I'll put up the friggin' banner, is because of what these people just said. I'm going to play it again, and then we are going to go to the private server where I got a few more words. In to a border. Christian, I'm going to come to you in just a second, but I, do, I want to get back to the senator here because this is a really interesting one because the U.S. is, in effect, using a physical means to try and control the development of digital capabilities. It is. With Listen to that. The U.S. is using physical means, microchips, to control digital access. With the chip. It is so sensitive to us that we remain a leader in terms of the high-speed technology available in the most advanced chips, that we measure our spread from us versus our near-peer adversaries in a technology period of months. How many months ahead do we believe we are in the development of AI capabilities? And by simply restricting the availability of chips, and in fact, the most advanced chips, we know it's not a long-term success, but it is a short-term success while we can uh, uh, slow down other development while we proceed as best. This is the blackout. What he's talking about right here, where we can slow down the progress. Well, how do you slow down the progress? How do you slow down the people you want to control? Say that again, motherfucker. Technology period of months. How many months ahead do we believe we are in the development 
of AI capabilities. And by simply restricting the availability of chips, and in fact, the most advanced chips, we know it's not a long-term success, but it is a short-term success while we can uh, uh, slow down other development while we proceed as best we can to maintain our competitive edge. Other areas, uh, networking is one area that we have a real advantage. And it's one that we can never allow ourselves to be uh, uh, in second place on. And so th that's the reason why, the, why, why we do have the restrictions on it. We know it's not a long-term fix, but it gave us a few more months in terms of our technology edge. Christiana, you, you, um... All right, we have great questions. Do we expect them to issue digital IDs after the blackout? How does the Liberty Laptop prevent that? The Liberty Laptop is set up specifically, specifically for going around their internet using what they call the deep web the dark web. It's not a deep web. It's not a friggin', it's not a dark web. It's the part of the internet that they don't control. We set up the, the Liberty laptops so that the microchips do not report to the entities on the 3% Google web. That's how we do it. And then, and then we teach you, we teach you how to access the free web, the deep web, the dark web safely. Folks, if they want to lock up their 3% of the deep web or their 3% of the internet, that's fine. Fuck you guys. You go right ahead. But with the Liberty Laptop, it allows you and teaches you how to get around these motherfuckers. By the way, here, fuck you guys. That was for the WEF, the W-E-F. You guys go fuck yourselves. Exactly. EJ, I'm with you, brother. So please, I'm I'm gonna run the ad one more time. And I'm telling you guys, and then on the private server, we're gonna we're gonna go into this. Introducing the Liberty Laptop, your gateway to online anonymity. Engineered with your privacy in mind, the Liberty Laptop comes equipped with cutting-edge security features, ensuring that your data remains yours and yours alone. No more worries about your personal information being shared without consent. Say goodbye to prying eyes and third-party snoops. Enjoy your online freedom with advanced privacy settings, protecting your every digital move, all at your fingertips. With the Liberty Laptop, you control what others see and don't see. We customize your privacy settings and let only what matters most to you be shared. No more concerns about unwarranted surveillance. We put the power back in your hands. No unwanted access through the laptop's camera and microphone. Powered by the latest technology, the Liberty Laptop ensures performance while respecting your personal boundaries. The Liberty Laptop. Your control. Your privacy. Your world. Visit calixsolutions.io to experience true personal freedom today. All right, I want you to call 702-845. Hang on. 
I don't let the phone number scroll by again. You can call or text 702-845-8276. Or you can go to calixsolutions.io. All right. Everyone, I'm sorry I'm switching over to the private server. Because we got some talking to do. If you want to join the private server, it's right there. That QR code. Or there's a link under here for the private server. I'll be right back, guys. Those of you already watching on the private server you're good everyone else join now do it trust me this show is going to be some eye-opening shit hold please <laughs> 